time, Rosanna. Um, I think that we should probably tell them a little secret about us. Okay. Is that 30 years ago, 31 years ago, years ago. Um, we met, Rosanna was designing a movie called Treacherous Passage. And um, they had made the costumes wrong. Oh and she God. came to me and I overnight helped her make them oh, fit better. Right. Angie that, Dickinson and Lindsay Wagner. Dickinson. Wack. And they made this costume <laughs> and I, over at CRC, sorry. Shh. They measured her and they made the costume. They didn't allow any more allowance, you know, so like. She couldn't do this. She had to wave she, well, goodbye. No, and she was because like, when you measure someone, you have to add like four inches. Like if the bust is 36 you have to have some room. I mean, you can't just have it be like so tight. Yeah, you know. Anyway, they made this costume, and I was all. We had to shoot the, like the next day, and so Ronan Meyer said, "Oh my God, we have to go see Sal <laughs> Perez." And so I ran over there, and he was living. Where were you living in Silver Lake? Silver Lake. Silver Lake. Yeah. yeah. And I went over there, and Sal had these people working in the shop. But at I, that time, it was just me. It was just, oh, it was just you. Yeah, just me. Yeah, and you just got out of school and you were like 20 years old. <laughs> Something like that. And I, and I <laughs> took over this costume. I said, how can we fix this? So it, it wouldn't, the, you know, it moved. So we had to put these like panels under mm -hmm. the arm and we had to put panels in it. And it worked like the next day on the Queen Mary. Oh, that's right. It was a terrible, <laughs> not terrible uh, But that really sort TV of, we, we bonded on that. Oh, and God. I learned a lot from you. And I realized now watching this film, like that you really set the precedent for how high school prom movies. I think that every high school prom movie we've ever done is sort of based off of your work on this. Probably. So this was shot in 1975. This is early in your career. There were a lot of costumes. Did you have a big crew? No. I had Aggie Lyon <laughs> and, and Vicki Snow. Who didn't Although Vicki Snow doesn't say she, she wasn't there. She was on it. She just forgets. She was on the show. I swear to God. But so you there. did that whole movie with two yes, people. With two people. And we had no money. We had... <laughs> We had no money. We had no money. And we had this vicious production manager named Lou Stroller. <laughs> yeah. this, do you remember him? Yeah. That guy. He, but he won. He won. You know, he said, we have no money. We just have no money. So you have to But I mean, you had to have dressed everybody for the prom, right? Because yeah. you destroyed those clothes. But Aggie and I were driving in Van Nuys one day. We were driving down the road on Woodman Avenue, I think. Mm -hmm. and, and we saw this store was going out of business. It was like a... It was a, a cost. It was like a rentals, you know, tuxedo uh. rentals store, and they had gowns and tuxedos. So I called Lou Stroller and I said, "Look, man, just buy this thing." Oh my God! <laughs> you know, they have doubles. They had all the tuxedos. They had all the gowns, and they had doubles because that's insane. It was insane. Psychic that, shopping. Yeah, and it was immediate. And so, like Bill Cat, you know, tuxedo mm -hmm. that awful blue tuxedo thing. But was it awful then, or was it fabulous then? No, you like it was awful. It was awful. It was fucking fabulous. It was the most fabulous thing I ever saw in my life. And you know, do you remember how many you had? Bill Katz. No, of those of that set blue tuxedo, just the one or two, or did... oh no, we had like five of those. Ah. That was the thing. When we bought, when they bought the production company, bought that store. You know, it was a whole store, so they had all the doubles of everything. That's why you see so many ugly white. Tuxedo. Because you were, of course. Because that was what they rented out. Those were real, you know, right. costumes that they rented. But you only had two of Carrie's dress. Yes, because they were so cheap. Uh. And they said, you know, you only need two. <laughs> I mean, she's wearing my shoes. That dummy that's in the house that felt, that's mine. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, I mean, it was just like they had nothing. That dress that she, the outfit she wears with the rickrack, mm -hmm. I made that. You know, they Lou Stroller, this production manager, who is like an evil devil. I think he's still around. I'm, still, I'm sorry. No, I'm I, sorry. I worked with but Lou then, Stroller, and he brought me into his office, and he was evil. I, um, Elsa Zamparelli did a movie with Martin Lawrence, uh -huh. and I had to go into his office with Elsa and show him Martin's clothes, like on a hanger. Like, right, it. right. Oh, yeah. No, the guy was just vicious. Yeah. And he just said, but he won. He won, <laughs> you know, because I did it for cheap. I came in under budget. Well, that's producers. They give you an impossible task. And yeah, if you accomplish it, then they're a better producer. Right. I guess. And then, I mean, like I noticed in, in that scene in the high school that those girls were so chic. And, you know, you were telling me that those, those were the actors' own clothes. Yes. You went to their closets. And yeah, we went. So Aggie and I, I mean, this show was so hard. You know, they'd give us like these petty cash checks. We'd have to go into the office and they'd give us like a paper check. Hmm? And then we had to go down to the bank. And we we knew not to go. To, I know. So they so we would spend the money and it worked. And we went, so we went down to the bank and we know not to go on like welfare day or on social security day. <laughs> because there'd be too long a line. So we'd, we'd go down there 
and we'd have to cash these checks <laughs> and then we'd have to go out, you know, and we had no money. I mean, it was like incredible. They, Do you remember your budget? No. No. It was nothing. It was nothing. $25, you know, $10,000. It was nothing. And we just, you know, no. So we just had to like, you know, play it by ear. We had to just, you know, do it. And so we went to, so we would go to these actresses' houses. And they're not, these are not teenage girls. These are young. No, they had to be over 18 because otherwise it would be nude. Yeah. <laughs> can't be in the movie. So we go to their house and we'd look through their clothes and then we'd just like see what they had that was nice. And Which is why they're so fabulous because they were adult women. Because they were growing up and yeah. they had money. Well, they didn't have money. A lot of them were poor. Sorry, and actors. Really but I mean, like, they went, I mean, it's like, you had, you, know, you had Nancy really Allen, John Travolta, William, Ke I mean, Amy Irving, and her mother who played her own, who put her in the, no, no. I well, mean, Amy had and money. Betty Buckley. But I mean, it's like, you, it was really like, Brian DePaul, whoever cast this, really got some great, and, and John Travolta said at the time was, you didn't know who he was. Well, we didn't know who he was. Aggie and I didn't know who he was. So we called him up to get his sizes. So we call up and this woman answers the phone and she says, this is John Travolta's assistant. And Aggie and I just thought, oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> we had never watched, you know, Welcome Back, Cotter. We didn't know what that was. And, and we thought, oh, man, this guy, he's got this girlfriend of his answering the phone. <laughs> you know, and, and then so she said, okay, go down and fit him. He's working at Palisades High. So we went down to Palisades High, and he's got this trailer at Palisades High. And we thought, oh, my God. John who is this guy? Who is this guy? <laughs> And so we go in the trailer, and then they, the bell rings, and it's like lunchtime. And all the students came running out, and they, like, stormed the trailer. You know, everybody, I mean, they, they were rocking the trailer. All the fans were trying to get to John Travolta. And then yeah. you ended up working with him on... The Experts. The experts. In Canada. And that's where he was also with Kelly Preston, right? Kelly Preston. So you met them both Kelly early on. Preston. Yeah, and, and John was so nice. And he, and he always said, I was his sister. He thought we looked alike. I think we kind of do a little bit. I kind of get that, yeah. A little bit, you know. And so he, he took me everywhere, you know. And he, you know, he was so nice. And he gave me this beautiful bracelet that says, love, to Rosanna, love John Travolta. Uh -huh. <laughs> As you should. <laughs> and then I'm you worked with Nancy off. Ellen. Nancy Ellen again on. Yes, and she was in Ro a RoboCop too. Yeah. So these these actors sort of came in and out of your career. I mean, you guys were all working all the time, which is kind of amazing. Yeah, it was incredible. And what was Brian De Palma to, to what Brian De Palma to work for? I mean, was he a great collaborative director? Brian De Palma. I owe my whole life to Brian De Palma. Oh. Thank you, Brian De Palma, if you ever see this. Thank you very much. I knew Brian De Palma in real life. In like, he was friends with my ex-husband, Bill Norton. And he came over to our house, and I knew him. And I did this movie called The Secret Curse of Lamora. Mm -hmm. And then um, they recommended me to do The Phantom of the Paradise with him. Ah. And I knew Sissy Spacek from Badlands, and I knew Jack Fisk from Badlands. So Brian, you know, gave me the job. I was wow. a kid. I was young. And, you know, he just said, I don't, I don't know anything about costume. Just do it. So he just lets you do your thing. Like, I mean, because it's, do that, it. like, like, well, somebody just pointed out that that dress that Carrie wears, like every little girl in the world wore that dress. Like you oh really God. started a trend. That dress. <laughs> I know. It's such a great dress. And you said you you had you had a cut if it to make one and you made the second one. That's right. Yeah. And I before had, there was union, which you can still do that. <laughs> yeah, I had this. I had a cutter fitter named Yoko Shinohara, who was just brilliant, and she could make. She was like Sal. She could make suits. She did all Paul Williams costumes on the Phantom of the Paradise. She would made the cape on Phantom of the Paradise. I mean, she she was really good, and I don't know, she's probably still around. And so I had her make the one dress, and then I thought, okay, I've got still have more fabric. I have more of this fabric, so if I have to, I'll make another dress. But they just didn't have the money; they wouldn't give me the money. And and you, I mean, so you had you did that whole movie with two dresses? Yes. Crazy. And Jack just stood on a ladder, and he dumped the blood on her head. And we had one take. I mean, I guess I had. You can kind of see that, yeah. Yeah, I know. I mean, you've had a long, incredible career. Some of your credits include Tron, which you were nominated for Academy Award, Phantom of Paradise. By the way, I got fired from Tron. <laughs> <laughs> And still got an Academy Award nomination. Still got an Academy Award nomination. Airplanes um, 1 and 2, Ruthless People with Bette Midler, Nothing in Common, Inner Space, The Experts, The Burbs, Loverboy with a Very Young Patrick Patrick Dempsey, yeah. um, Gremlins 2, Robocop 2, Frankie and Johnny with Al Pacino and Michelle Pfeiffer, The Flintstones, which I built for you, yeah, yeah, um, Brady, Brady Bunch 1 and 2, Casper and Barb Wire. Barb Wire. Oh what, do you have any of those that were like, preferably memorable that you enjoyed or were like you know what uh, yeah barbed wire? yeah <laughs> barbed wire was so much fun 
Oh, I mean, we had a lot of fun on that movie, except for really. Well, that was a weird movie. That was. I mean, they they fired the director the first week. They fired Adam Rifkin, which was a joke. Adam Rifkin was a really good director, and I've done other things for him. I did Detroit Rock City for him. And was I that did, Adam? I didn't realize that. That's Adam Rifkin, and I did another thing for him. And what he, I, I did some high school thing for him. I mean, no, he was really great. And yeah. he still calls you, and this is like he 25 years later, he still calls you. And he wanted me to do this movie with him with, um, what's his name? <clears throat> with, um, God, my mind is gone. Anyway, Adam Rifkin wanted me to do this movie for him, but I just said, I'm too old. It's too hard. I can't get up the trailer stairs, you know. I can't. And but, I mean, look, since your retirement, you've really been busy with your art. I mean, you, yeah. you're a fine painter, and I've seen your work. Yeah. So, I mean, are you enjoying this next chapter of your career? Oh hell yeah! <laughs> oh yeah! Was, uh, you know, working it was so hard, and all my life, every night I dream about working. I'm working. I'm dreaming it. Oh my god, this costume's all ready. We have to be on the set. I mean, last night I had a dream that no, it's like that. Every you, night. So we never. So that never goes away. No. <laughs> no, I have nightmares about it. <laughs> I have nightmares about it all the time. <laughs> and I was looking at IMGb, and it, there was a couple of credits as wardrober. So, did you start in, as a set customer, or what no, was your I no? Was always a costume designer. Wow, you got in the business as a costume designer. Well, Sheila O'Brien, mm. the late great Sheila O'Brien. So, for those you don't know, she was the original exec. She was the first executive director of the Costume Designers Guild. Right, she was. And and this movie was shot in 1975. It came out in 76, and the guild was formed in 1976. That's so right. it was very early on in your career. Yes, it was. And Sheila O'Brien took pity on me. <laughs> I designed the costumes for Phantom of the Paradise, and then they thought maybe I'd get a nomination for that because it had really good costumes and stuff. And then Sheila called me up and she said, "You know, do you want to join the costume design? You know," and I had to really. Kiss her ass, sorry. <laughs> I had to go over to her house and beg her to let me in the Costume Designers Guild because I wanted, you know, and, and she took pity on me because I had children. But in exchange for that, I had to like, no, it's really sad. I'm sorry. But, no, no, but I love this. I love this part. She would. She had a big continental, continental. and she had to drive around. And I drove Edith Head and Howard Shue. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. <laughs> Wasn't I awesome? I was just awesome. <laughs> and uh, so so we, we in those days they didn't have like screeners and they didn't have discs and stuff so everything had, was an so actual we screen judging the you know the academy awards or we're, we'd have to go to the screening rooms so i was their chauffeur so i drove <laughs> them around you know and then and so they let me be she let me be in the costume designer's guild and what i mean it's like i you, you know i remember this is what i met rosanna pre-internet and I'm this like stupid kid, and I would like pester her, like Rosanna, what films do you work on? She's like, I'll tell you later, I'll tell you later. And so finally, after like a week of me working for her, she comes over and she hands me her resume so I could stop asking her what film she'd worked on. Uh, okay, I'll pay for resume. <laughs> but I mean, because that's the thing. It's like nowadays you Google, you know, whoever. But back then it was like, how would you know? I I, I think that I learned so much from you because you were such a uh, a, a designer who went with your gut. Like there was never any bullshit with you. You like yeah. you like this is what it's going to be. It's going to yeah, be fabulous. You taught me to like have the courage of your convictions. Well, you have to. And you were never, I remember like going to production meetings with you and you were in charge. You know, it's all about selling shit. You know, you just have to go in there and say, God damn it. This is what it is. You know, and no. If you can't, and I mean, really, if you can't delegate responsibility, what are you doing? Why are you hiring a costume designer? You know, on the Flintstones, the Steve Brian Spielberg's, you know, he, um, oh, the horrible director, Brad LeVant. Anyway, the, the producer of the mm -hmm. Flintstones had been Steven's teamster driver and oh. made him the producer. And they didn't even think they needed a costume designer on the Flintstones. <laughs> but they just thought, you know, they could use costumers and they could just, you know, since... No, they did the first Jurassic Park without costume designers. Your team, Eric Sandberg Eric and, and, and uh, yeah. Sue Moore, Sue Moore, who were yeah. your team, were the supervisors on, on, on Jurassic Park without costume designers. And no you can tell because it looks it all plaid shirts. Like <laughs> I'm sorry. What's the, name? What's the name of that guy? He wears this horrible jumpsuit that's all tied on him and terrible. I mean, no, it's just like, you know, they think they don't need a costume designer. But I mean, Stephen was very, I mean, because I remember when we were doing Casper and uh -huh. then we shut down production because Brad's wife was going to play the angel. Uh -huh. And then you got, they wanted her in red, not white, because we had made a white dress. Right, yeah. And then they shut down so they could change the. We, the Steven Spielberg. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> sorry. I'm not working anymore. I don't need to work yeah. anymore. So I can say everything about Steven. You'll never do lunch in this town again. <laughs> so, 
so I can talk about Steven Spielberg. But I'm just saying it was it was just it was Steven Spielberg came over to my house. He crashed my parties when I was a young girl and I lived in Venice. And <laughs> and my ex-husband Bill Norton and I we always have these big parties. And Steven Spielberg like crashed my parties. And then you know then when I had, ended up working for him he would he wouldn't recognize me. <laughs> he would pretend he didn't know me, but he perfectly well knows me, you know. And I was just lucky. We were lucky on the Flintstones that he was doing Schindler's List. Right. And he was gone. Because he wasn't there much at all. He was there all the time on Casper. Oh, yeah. You know, it's a joke. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 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 No, and then I remember we, I prepped. I'm not sorry. I'm I not prepped sorry about anything. Uh, I'm not going to regret anything. I've never done anything wrong in my life. No, we did a little movie called Operation Dumbo Drop, which is yes, about the Vietnam did. War. And oh. I prepped it and then I sent you off on your own to yes, Thailand. Yes, I went to Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was fun. And you would call me at two in the morning yeah. and say, this is what I need for the day. Because yeah. it was eight in the morning in Thailand and I would have all day to shop it. And then I'd yeah, ship it to you. Yeah, you sent it to me. Oh, yeah. I couldn't have done that without you. That was really a hard movie. And but I'm saying is like that was and I remember you telling me this great story about your local assistant who was oh. a redheaded white boy who spoke perfect Thai. Oh yeah, that guy. <laughs> oh yeah, Sean. John. <laughs> you know, no, you've you've had sort of a, this this amazing career that just sort of from period to fantasy to you know, uh, it, it's it's it was great because I think that in your career you were never pigeonholed. Really? Yeah. I thought I was. You sort of did. You sort of did everything. You had. I never did really period stuff. Well, just, I mean, Treasure's Fatures, and I met you as period. Yeah, that's true. And then I did one thing for for a TV movie for about Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn or something. I mean, you know, <laughs> but really, I didn't do much period stuff. Flintstones I think you get... Was <laughs> Flintstones was period. Oh, that's right. That's right. It was the Stone Age. Good point. Good point. Yeah, that was really period. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> My career is, is the career I am because I worked for you. I learned you so, so much. much from you. Well, it really nice sort of set the precedent. I what actually a custom learned designer. a lot from Sal, <laughs> people. You know, Sal knows how to cut and fit. Like you, who made your, you know, made Carrie's yeah, dresses. I can't stuff. make stuff like you can. <laughs> I really can't. I mean, he can make everything. He can make suits and shit. You know, I mean, I can't do that. <laughs> I mean, I can but they really don't look very good, you know? <laughs> but it was, I mean, I, I just remember, like, even on Casper, where, you know, you... You made Kathy Moriarty look so chic, and you oh, both, she's beautiful. And you, you had known her before. You knew her personally. Before. Yes, I did. Yeah, I knew a lot of people, you know, because in in real life. I mean, what Rosanna doesn't tell you is that you know she's she's not just some like poor girl who decided to be a costume designer. She has a very interesting and checkered past. Uh oh, like, who was one of your who was one of your early boyfriends, Rosanna? Oh, Jim Morrison. Just a little like Jim Morrison. <laughs> Because you were you were born and raised in L.A., right? Oh yeah, and your father was a he was an architect. An architect. He was an architect of Disneyland. Disneyland. Yeah, yeah. So I remember we li I li I rented out your house at Oak Pass Road, oh, that's right, across yeah. street from Carrie Fisher and next door to Sylvester Stallone, and the house was <laughs> built with the remnants from Disneyland, right? That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he yeah they lived in my house and Nancy did too and yeah a lot of people yeah she had this amazing house and an open an open Benedict Canyon um, that hold it and now it's um, what's that show it's on the the Real Housewives of... oh did because I mean it was a massive it was like a couple acres of property it was like five acres and the thing is and so now it's on that TV show um, it's like the Real Housewives of oh so somebody built on it yeah oh yeah and it's, now it's on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills oh. or something one of those TV shows. Which is really stupid. <laughs> That's why. Well, I'm sure there's audience questions because she has this amazing career that I'm sure you want to, you know, who's, where, where are we taking questions? Ask me a question. Ah, there's a microphone over there. Okay. Can we, do, can we get the lights on so she can see what she's talking I'll to? spill the beans. So I have a question about Carrie and the okay. costumes in Carrie. And so, you know, there are so many iconic costumes from Carrie. And what I've always wondered is about the red cap. Thank you. So my question Norma's about the red... red hat. Norma's red hat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so so Norma's red hat, the one that has like a rainbow on one side, it has a cloud on the other yeah. side, she wears it to the fucking prom. No. She, she, was this that, is was her... Was that this scripted is her, or was that... It's her uniform, so was I this... That, up. that was totally you. Oh, it's that not was totally in the book. Me. That was my question. So my question was, was because I've read the book uh -huh. and it wasn't in the book, no. but I was wondering if it was in the script... No, and if it was, was and up. also like, you know, <laughs> no, when she decided that she was different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's going to wear this. She wore different this shorts. Hat, she wore but different then hat. also, 
at the fucking prom? But I should, well, she was a character, PJ. Yeah, said. it just really, it fit and it was so perfect. So I was just always wondering yeah, how that happened. Idea. I take credit for all of it. No, you know, Brian De Palma, just let me do whatever I wanted. He hey. was so nice. I, 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 Like I say, I owe everything to Brian De Palma. He would just let me do what I wanted. He said, I don't know about costumes. You, he delegated responsibility. I love when a director says that. I oh. love that. It's my favorite yes. thing. It's like Joe Dante. <laughs> the same way. I love Joe Dante. I mean, he he just said, do it. You know, just do it. They trusted you. Yeah, they trusted me. They hired the right person. They trusted They hired somebody. Why are they paying me if I can't, you know, I mean, well, what's the point? Don't hire a costume Right, partner. right. Hire an idiot. Hire somebody <laughs> off the road. Don't hire anyone. Hire some customers. Okay, next question. Hey, Rosanna. It's Christopher Lawrence. Yeah. Um, there's a... I don't know if it's urban legend that Sissy Spacek, once she got bloodied up in the prom dress, that she lived in the dress... Uh, the whole time they filmed that, I was wondering yes, if you could talk about true. that. that's true. And also, she's a method actress, and Jack Fisk had built the set with her room in it, and she lived in that room. She would stay in her room, you know, during the shooting, and I think she stayed overnight sometimes in the studio. Yeah. So was that done on stage, or was it location? Yeah, that was on stage. Uh, All that stuff in the house. And where was the high school? The high school was in South Bay. It was a junior high. Oh. Down in, in the down in the South Bay, somewhere in like Manhattan Beach or somewhere like that. And was the fire practical? Because I know like... When that, was leaving, a, that was an... Allu- I mean, that was... It was visual effects. Visual effects. There was the yeah. fire. No. Wow. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Mercifully. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Sean LeBlanc. Question for you. So Carrie has become iconic in film land. What do you think about Carrie on stage as a musical now? I never heard of it. Good. On stage? I just have to watch it. I, I never even heard of it. Yeah, we should find a video of it. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Video. My name is Bella Ruffy. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. Hi, Bella. Uh, I was kind of wondering, I really love your costumes and they're really pretty. And uh, I was kind of wondering, which one was your favorite to make? My favorite costume? Mm-hmm. Do you, like, favorite, do you have a favorite film? I mean, like, what was the most fun movie I ever worked on? Yeah. Get Crazy, which was this really weird movie by Alan Arkish, which was, okay. yeah, and had Malcolm McDowell. And it was really this silly movie, but it was really fun. We had a lot of fun. People didn't even want to go home at the end of the day. <laughs> but if you ask me what my favorite movie can relate is to, that. to watch or something, I guess it's probably Phantom of the Paradise. Yay. And, and probably, and Carrie is really good. And you know what? I also really like the Burbs. The Burbs, which I just watched recently, and I forgot how good that movie was. That's such a good movie with Tom Hanks and Carrie Fisher. And Carrie Fisher was in a lot of movies I did, but, you know, that was a really good one. Okay. So I have a question. Uh, If if something, like, happened, like, in your life, like, which movie, like, changed your career? Like, like your entire life. Like, Like, name one. God, I don't know. I mean, you know, I started out, I didn't even know I would do this. What, and, what's your, what was your training? What did you go to school for? I went to UCLA and I majored in art and painting, you know, which did me no good at all. Well, no, <laughs> I, di- I disagree. I think your well, color oh, no, palette. I'm a good painter. Yeah, I'm a and good your painter, color palettes and, were always yeah, amazing. I'm a good palette, yeah. But, um, but you never were a customer. You never, no, you, you I was just never started your first job as a customer. My design. first job, well, I know it was nepotism. Well, that's okay. My ex-husband, Bill Norton, he got the job of directing. And he was a director of... I met him at UCLA and we were married and he did this movie Cisco Pike with Chris Christopherson. And so Jerry Ayers, the producer of that movie, let me be the costume designer and the production designer. Wow. Yeah, I know. I know. It was incredible. <laughs> it was nepotism. It was total nepotism. Well, nepotism gets you the first job. Gets you the first had a 50, job and then 51 had... film career, so yeah, it's not right. all nepotism. No, that wasn't. No, of course not. I mean, I did that one movie and then I got another one and then I got another one and so on. So I guess that would be the one. And also, the funny thing is, Chris Christopherson was in the very first movie I ever did in Harry Dean Stanton. And one of the last movies I ever did had both of them in it, which was a Steven Seagal movie, wow. Fire Down Below. A terrible, uh, yeah, yeah, boo. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steven Seagal, you know, I mean, Steven Seagal. I, I, did, I was no longer working with you at that point, but I heard some stories about like oh you couldn't get God. fitting, so you had to buy lots of clothes. No, he wouldn't ha- take, have a fitting. He wouldn't leave his house. He sat in his house. He sat by the pool. He had a gun. A big, you know, like a Glock or something. I don't know what they are. And and he sat at his house and the tailor would have to come over there and like, and he'd walk around, you know, we'd have to make all these different things to see if something fit. And when he hired me, 
he had me come to his house and he had his dogs sniff me. <laughs> he had these big dogs. I swear to God, I swear this is true. I'm ratting him out. I hope he doesn't kill me. <laughs> I think he's in Russia now. I think he's. He is in Russia. I think he's living in Russia but now. But you did several films with him. I did so three, he must, the dog must have liked you. The dogs loved me. And I did three <laughs> movies with him. And I did this one in Bulgaria. And I did I did one in Montana and stuff. Yeah, I did all these movies for him. He paid me my, my money. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> are, are there any more questions? Oh, oh sorry. Yes. Uh, by the way, I have to say, I've been to a lot of uh, Q and A's. This is the greatest Q and A I've ever been to in my life. So let's give a round of applause. Thank you. Yes. And I don't know why I'm saying thank you, as if I deserve any. You've done a few movies with De Palma. What? And I'm a huge De Palma fan and a huge fan of your work. What was it like? What were what were his sets like when you were on set with him and him as a director? And how did he work with the actors and you and all of that? Well. You're going to tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what we want. Well, you know, Brian really delegated responsibility. And he did it with the actors, too, which is good. It really can be good. You know, and he like, so unlike some directors who are so like. Micromanagers. Micromanagers, like the directors of, um, what was the one with, with Bette Midler? Ruthless People. Ruthless People. Those guys, you know, the Zucker brothers and stuff, they would like do 75 takes, you know, I mean, they just were really bossy about the actors. And Brian was good because he'd let the actors do their own thing and he'd let everybody do their own thing. And you can really tell in Carrie, because it's like, I think it's just sort of like people don't give it credit because it's, oh, it's a horror teen horror movie. It, they're amazing performances. Like, oh, yeah. Everybody in that movie is amazing. Everybody in that movie is great. I mean, um, Hyper Laurie is she like... She got an Academy other, Award yeah, nomination Yeah, otherworldly for from... I mean, that, yeah, there was two Academy Award nominations, right? Sissy yeah, Sissy, 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 Sissy. Yeah, and Brian De Palma's great. Those are his best movies, Phantom of the Paradise and Carrie. And those are really his best movies of all. And I think it was because he was young and, he, and he'd let us all do our own thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but that—that—that's the sign of a great director who sort of really hires is. people. Who, he he tr obviously he trusted you. He met you socially, but yeah. he trusted you. Yeah, he trusted and me, and you he did an amazing job. Too. So yeah, which is good. Yeah, very cool. No, Brian is great. I love everything. Thank you, Brian. I don't have a question. I just have words of gratitude. I've been doing this twenty-seven years, and I question being so unapologetic as a female costume designer or as a costume designer in general. You reminded me to be myself, to be authentic, and Good. to own it, Good and to you. be dope as fuck. You've made it this far, and you're, no, your resume, like, I'm sorry, lover boy, it's like one of the films I grew up with. Really, you know, you are, you are dope. You are you know so secret. Cool. You want to know my secret? Yes. The actors are the most important thing. You have to disappear. I would never wear this witch costume down to the set or anywhere. I mean, this is really funny because I would chastise you. We're going to a video. I'm like, Roseanne, you're wearing a t-shirt and a baggy skirt. She's like, shut. And you, it was, now I get it. You... No, because you don't want to like outshine the actors. You don't want to be more beautiful than the actresses. You don't want to be, you know. But your talent shines no matter. Thank you. Thank you. Like, you're that's kind. what. But the thing screen. you're, no, I mean, the secret is, and you have to kiss ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't mean to be rude. But you have to kiss their ass. You have to be really nice and disappear and let them be, because they're actors. They want to expose themselves, you know, which is another thing. And they want, <laughs> <laughs> they want to take all their clothes off in front of you, don't they? Yep. They really do. And they want to be actors and they want to be on camera and they don't want to, and they don't want to look, you know, they don't want people looking at me. You know, they want people looking at them <laughs> like they should. Yeah. Well, I mean, this this has been so much fun to just you know be able to reconnect after all this time oh, and yeah. just and and ask those questions that I probably didn't ask you because I I think I asked you so many questions back in the day. Okay. But this has just been fun and thank you and I think that we can all acknowledge that Carrie is really a true iconic film in Hollywood. It really is. And your costumes are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you all for coming. Yeah, um, thank you. You know, it's it's Halloween weekend, and you came to spend your weekend with us. So that's you know, we were very grateful. We will, and and thank you to Mika and Jennifer for setting up this amazing yeah. movie night. Yeah, yeah.